In this section, we're going to talk about opening your CSV file in a spreadsheet and then replacing the column headers. We need to do this in order to import your data into Lofty. What I'm going to do in this section is two parts. One, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do, and then I'm going to show you what to do. So we're going to have a demo at the end. Uh, let's walk through this real quick. If you have more than one CSV file, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to work on each one separately and then import one at a time. Uh, that's if you have brought it in from multiple sources, that's going to be the best way to do it. Also, you could use uh, the process of getting started now with a small list and then adding to it later. All right, let's go through so the big tip here at the beginning, and that is uh, before you uh, move on and import your list, the best practice here is to add these column headers at the beginning of your spreadsheet. You'll see me do that in a minute. Uh, but we're going to add these in to our spreadsheet so that it is uh, simplified when we update it into Lofty. It's easier for you to add them in now and look at all on a spreadsheet than try to do it one at a time once it's inside the database. Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to do once we have our spreadsheet open, and again, we'll see an example in a minute, is we're going to uh, replace or copy or paste uh, your column headers, the column headers that are, are currently in our spreadsheet with the lofty column headers. And this text below is what we're going to use to do that. This is the text that Lofty will read. If you see these column headers down here uh, in that column there called uh, Lofty column headers. All right, we're going to walk through. We're going to copy and paste each of these and put them into our spreadsheet at the top. And that will speed up this whole process. Uh, if there are any in here that don't match, uh, we will either ignore them or if they're uh, if we think they're critical, and I'll explain what that means in a minute, then we would add them to the end. That's what this is all saying. Uh, and also, final tip here, don't spend time reordering the columns. Just go ahead and add the Lofty column headers to the correct column during the import. Lofty will match the column headers to the correct contact field. Uh, another little note is all dates in this format. So if you have a date that you're entering, such as a birth date or close date, that's the format you want to use. And we'll do an example in a minute. If you're looking at this uh, quick start guide, here are the column headers that we are concerned about in this grouping. Um, and I just want to show you that down here, I've given you all column headers inside a lofty below but you're not going to be using these. I just want you to know in case you see them at some point, uh, if you see them in, maybe you've downloaded the template that Lofty gives you and you think, oh my gosh, I got to know what the inquired city and state and zip and max price. You don't need to know any of that to make this work. So you're not likely to use anything below this line. I'm just showing you that it's here uh, so it doesn't throw you off. Okay, we're just going to add these uh, items up here, these reduced list of items. Um, what else do we have before we go into our sample right here? Add in a unit number. This is actually important. If you have an address for a property, uh, you're going to add the unit number at the inside of that address text because Lofty doesn't have a separate unit number field. All right. So if you have 123 Elm Street unit number A, Unit number A has to be inside the 123 Elm Street address. And I'll show you an example. Uh, you can't put it in a, as a separate field. It won't get uploaded. All right, so you're going to enter all your own data. All, you're going to enter all the known data now. If you don't know something, just leave it blank and get started. You can always add things later once the data is inside of the um, CRM. All right, so let's go back up to the top. And now let's actually start walking through this and showing you what to do. Okay, so our first thing that we needed to do was we're going to go ahead and add some space for these column headers. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need to add eight columns at the beginning. Okay, here's my example of some information that I exported out of my contact list inside of um, Google Android. So I just had uh, one, two, three, four sample people here. 
they all happen to have the same last name as test SOI. That was just so I could find them easily in my database and export. But this is an actual export. And I did that on purpose. So you could see if you're doing it this way, you've got all kinds of headers up here, all kinds of information, some filled, some not. Uh, but it gives us a lot of data, uh, a lot of potential data. And we're not going to need all of this. We're just going to uh, focus on the ones that we have and that we need. Uh, for this project. So here's what's going to happen at the beginning. Again, the first step is to make space for these columns, the eight of them. So I'm going to go into column A, and I'm going to insert to the left. And now I have one of my eight columns. I'll do that again. You could do this just eight times since there are only eight of them. You can also do it all as a group at once, but I'll just go ahead and continue in this uh, method here. All right, I think I got eight. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so now I'm gonna add these column headers based off of our guide. So the first one is called lead type. I'll give you another little hint that I'm gonna use here, which is I'm going to uh, put the items that I add in in all caps. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in here. All right, so we got lead type. I go back and I get the next one. It's called pipeline. The next one is segment. Next one is tag. Next is source. So we'll just go one by one here. Next one is agent. And the next one is home anniversary date. You need all that, all three words there. Home anniversary date. And then finally, birthday. There we go. We've added the eight columns that we need, we want to have in there at the beginning. Uh, if you upload your list without these, you can still do it. But then you're going to have to go in and add all eight of these items, or at least several of them while it's in the database and that can get a little more confusing while it's in the CRM because you may have other records in there. And so uh, I recommend doing it right now. Uh, you can see I made this big so you can read it over here on the right. We have the name of our person. And so we're going to go down knowing who they are. We're going to do our best to answer these questions such as what's the lead type, pipeline, segment, tag, source, agent, home anniversary, or birthday. So uh, well, let's go to our notes. It says, hey, lead type is either going to be a homeowner or a renter. All right, so I look over here on the first line. I'm dealing with Jane Test, and Jane is a homeowner. So I'm going to type in homeowner and hit enter. And then I look at John. I know that John is also a homeowner. And nice thing about these spreadsheets, that autofill the rest once I put in the first letter. And uh, Terry, Terry is a renter. And so is Tom. Now let's go look for pipeline. Pipeline that says, hey, what do you enter here? We're going to enter just simply the word spear. There used to be other options, um, but it was just updated recently. And spear is the only option we have. So uh, I say that because we used to break it out with spear and past clients right now. Uh, for pipeline, uh, the only option is spear. Let's now go into segment. And so we read our notes. It says segment, hey, either call these people a past client or an SOI. Notice it's not the same word as sphere for sphere of influence. Now they're saying SOI for uh, sphere of influence. Okay, fine. So we're either going to call them past client or SOI. Now I look over here and Jane, she is a past client. 
Look at John. Uh, he is an SOI. I look at Terry and she is an SOI and Tommy is also an SOI. Now we're gonna go to tag. All right, so for tag, it's pretty simple. We're gonna enter just PCSOI and that stands for past clients and sphere of influence. This is the most important one, by the way, is the tag, because we are gonna search on tag once it's inside the database for us to pull up this special list of PCSOI so that we can do things like sending a mail out or sending a bulk email. Uh, there's a lot of things we're gonna use this tag for, and so it becomes pretty important. So let's get that in there. PCSOI, piece, and it's already in there now, P, -N -P. Okay, so we got the autofill speeds it up, and you're gonna go through your whole list and answer that question. Now we go back to the next uh, item, it's source. In this case, we are the source of the information, the word agent, just the word agent. So we're gonna type that in. And there we go, we got that done now. That's pretty easy, all of them will be agent. Now we're gonna go to the uh, column header says agent. Now this is gonna be you. So the agent is you, it's your name in your Lofty profile. So make sure you check out your Lofty profile and see how your name is spelled. Probably gonna be the same name that your username is all throughout Epic, but you may have changed it for some reason. So just do a double check. For instance, mine is Mike Cerrone. So I do all the way through, okay. This way it's going to uh, say that it's assigned to me. That's why it's important to have it here. Now we're gonna go to home anniversary. You may, this field won't be uh, applicable to everybody, but it's anybody that you help purchase a home. You wanna know the date that you helped them purchase that property. And right up here we have Jane, she's a homeowner. Uh, and if it happens to be that we helped her purchase that home, we wanna know the date. I'm going to go check my notes real quick again, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Home anniversary, I want to enter the date in this format. That's the only way I can read it in. Uh, I can find this information in a closed file or even ask a closing entity. Uh, but again, this is for people that I help them. I help purchase their help them purchase their home, and so we have a date of that closing. And we're going to want to then reach out to them on that date every year and say, "Hey, this is the date we work together." So let's go ahead and fill that in. All right, that was on a 10, 2015. I looked up in my records for Jane. John's also a homeowner and we happen to help him as well. And that happened on um, March 15th of 2011. All right, now Terry doesn't own a home, neither does Tommy, and we did not help them buy a home, so there's no home anniversary there. We leave those two blank. Then we're gonna go to the birthday or the birth dates that we know we're gonna enter them now. Let's just check our notes. It says, hey, birthday, enter it in this format. If you don't have it, leave it blank. All right, so we've got October 2nd, 1972 for uh, Jane. And then for John, for John, we have uh, August 18th of 1991. All right, and then I just don't have Terry's birthday or Tommy's, so I'm just gonna fill in what I have. Notice how we're filling this out. It's already uh, really taking shape. We have these eight items that we need already filled in. And now we're gonna go into the actual data itself and we're going to make sure that our column headers are correct and modified. So let me just show you where we are in the directions. From now we're moving down to replace and copy your column headers with the lofty column headers. And those lofty column headers are right here. Um, the reason this is important, uh, you could get away without it, but it's going to make it a lot smoother if you will tell lofty, hey, this is the first name, this is the middle name, this is the last name, this is the full name. Uh, and use their terms, they're gonna like it a lot better. All right, so let's go and see what we've got. This first one, uh, it just says name and my data. When I look at it though, that's a, I'm gonna move this over here by the way, just, let's just do that. And so I've got this name, this is a full name. 
right? And then I've got a given name that looks like a first name. And I got a family name, which looks like a last name to me. Okay, so I got three columns. And uh, we're going to go ahead and label those properly based on what we know from Lofty's column headers. So we're just going to copy and paste here first name. And first name is going to go where, oops, excuse me, first name is going to go here. And that's the given name. We're going to change that to first name. Okay, now first name is taken care of. Let's go to the next one on the list. That's middle name. I don't have middle names in my on my list. So let's go ahead and go to the next one, which is last name. Notice how I'm just going to skip it. I don't have it or need it. And so last name is here. Family name, I'm going to change to last name. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to go for full name. And full name was right here where it just said the word name. And I'm going to change that to full name. All right, so now we've got the names updated. Uh, full name, first name, last name. And notice we don't have any other information in other columns. So we can just move ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep working my way down the column list. So email, I do have email. And then I have uh, email description. And uh, well, well, we'll get to that in a minute. So we got email. Okay, now we're going to go look for the email. And here we go. We got email. Uh, and they have a crazy thing there, right? Email one value, da la 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 la. I just want to change that column header to say email. So go ahead and change that. And now that's good. I got my email column. Now let's go back over to my list. Uh, email description. What it's asking for here is the type of email. And in my database, I happen to have that. This is the work emails. So I'll go ahead and change that column header. Now I am going to change where this little dot or star came in. So I think that would mess things up when I import. Or I don't know. It might be okay, but I'm just going to take it out. I want it to be a clean import here. So work, work. That star is just a blank. And then this final one is work. All right, so now I've got email and email description. What else do we got here? Unsubscribe. Um, there was no unsubscribe item on my list. If you had pulled this out of an old CRM and they had unsubscribe, then you would indicate that they have subscribed and don't want to get email, but you could still call them on the phone or send them a direct piece of mail, et cetera. You could also uh, have their email address to you, say, in a Facebook audience, a Facebook audience. Uh, for uh, maybe some social media. So we'll leave the email in, but we would indicate that they then subscribe. Mine doesn't have that option because of where I pulled it from. But if yours does, you can do that. Uh, now we're going to go into phone, and we've got phone and phone description. So I'll click phone, make a copy here. All right, I've got uh, a couple of different phone numbers here. I got this phone, and I actually have a second phone. Um, just the way this system broke it out, it broke it out as mobile phones or home phones in case they had both. And then we've got a phone description. So that's the next column header. And that's actually in both of these. So this is going to be a descriptor for the first one. And this will be a descriptor for the second one. Okay. Uh, and that, that'll work. All right. What else do we have? Uh, if they're on the do not call list. Mine doesn't have that option. But if you did, again, because it came out of another database, then you can indicate what the answer is and make sure it's got the appropriate column header. All right, we already talked uh, or together about pipeline segment agent. Remember, we did that at the very beginning. Pipeline segment and so pipeline segment and agent are already in there. Lender, we're not going to be adding any lender. It's possible you have it in your database and you would add a specific lender for them, but I think that's going to be pretty rare for most people. So we'll go to the next one. 
which is mailing. We definitely want this to send out our direct mail. So we got mailing, we got a full address, but then we also have it broken out into parts and you may have one or the other or both. If you have both, you can label them all. If not, just pick one or the other. So we've got a uh, full and then just broken out as the street address, city, state, zip. Let's see what we've got here. Let's go find the mail. All right. So it looks like we've got an address here. This is for a home, home address. Uh, and that's actually a full address there. And there's a full address there. So that's our full address. And let me double check. Yep, I got full address that I've copied. So up here at the top, we're going to and paste it in there. Yep, there it is. All right, full mailing address. Um, and let's see what else we've got for mailing. I've got a mailing street address. This is just for the first part of the address. And there we go. Okay, so I just uh, remembered about a unit number, and I just know that in this database, it didn't have my unit number spelled out. Maybe yours does. If you do, make sure that unit number gets into this mailing full address and mailing street address uh, so that it's actually uh, pulled into the database and not lost. Because if you're sending to a condo or a townhome with a unit number, apartment with a unit number, it won't get to them. So uh, Oak Street is a house, but somewhere, 123 Somewhere Avenue is actually uh, unit B. So I've got to add that in or incorporate it into my full mailing address. And if I have a mailing street address, same thing. That's just the first part of that address. So there we go. So you may have already had it in there when you uh, downloaded out of your prior uh, database, or you may have had it as a separate column. Remember, the separate column can't get pulled in, so you got to put it into the actual street address so that it gets pulled in when you we upload, okay? All right, so now we've got the address, but I still need to, this broken out address. I need to get uh, the city and uh, the state and the zip. So let's go get that. we got the mailing city. And we'll change this. Okay, we need the mail state, mailing state. Okay, and then we need that zip code, mailing zip code. All right, we go back to our list here. Next, it says reg date. Um, I don't know what that's an abbreviation for, but I know what it is. That's the date that it go, went into a database. And so um, we don't have that. It'll be when we upload this, uh, Lofty will then create a reg date for the date we uploaded it so that we have a reference point. Um, but so just leave this blank for now. And in fact, it's not on my list anywhere, and I'm not going to worry about it. I could add a column here called reg and just leave it blank. But I, I've done this enough now that I know you don't even need to do that. Okay. It's only going to look for data that actually is a connection point, uh, actually shown uh, in the column headers, right? It's only going to try to match up the column headers. Okay. The next one is lead type, and we've already entered that. If you recall, we entered that all the way back here at the beginning. So we got lead type in. Next, we have tag. And if you recall, we had already entered tag right here. And we uh, used PCSOI. Now, I'll also point out, yeah, I have a couple options here. I recommend you just do a group PS, PCSOI. But if you think uh, that you want to break out your past clients or uh, versus just your sphere of influence in a search, then you could enter them separately, say PC and SOI. That would be fine as well. Uh, I do recommend just to go ahead and get them all in the PC SOI, but you do have that option 
Remember, tags are something that are, are really great because you can control what it's going to be that entry. And so that's why I'm saying you've got a little flexibility here. It's a great search term. But I'm going to recommend our best practice is just call it PCSOI for all of them. And that's what we've done here on our list. Next, we've got the birth date. Uh, and we give you a little hint. You can find that, say, in their Facebook profile, if you don't know. You can also find that in, say, a closed file or go back to the title entity. Excuse me, go back to the closing entity that might have been a title company or attorney or other. And uh, they will often keep that in their file uh, if you're looking for that information. Now, we entered their birth date here. Uh, and then I actually noticed that in our particular database, we pulled this out of there was their birth date as well. So we could have done either one. We could have, uh, we entered it on our own uh, in the appropriate format. But notice this is not in the appropriate format. It's flipped everything around. And so it probably won't enter right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some terms so that it does not call this the birth date. And um, that's it. I'm just going to add a letter in front of it. And now it should not be a problem when it gets imported. Now, if it happened to be in the correct format, I would have left this alone as the header birthday. Uh, and I think I would go back in and actually remove or delete this one because I, you don't want two of them in it to get confused. And uh, But since it's in the wrong format, I'm going to go ahead and just take out this header so it won't even get pulled in. It won't become an issue. All right. So over here on seller time frame, um, again, these are not going to be used. Buyer time frame, pre-qualified, we're not going to use. Uh, I'm just doing these in the order that uh, Lofty would give it to you, but those will not be involved. We're almost to the end, by the way. Uh, the next one is family members. And you're saying, what, is, what do you mean here? A common one would be a spouse or a significant other. Uh, that maybe people bought the house together, um, again, as either a married couple or uh, living together. And so we, we may want to have these people in our database. You're probably going to put the one, people always ask, well, what do you put first? Well, you put first, so the first person up here is the person you know the best. And then the second person would be the person you know second best, who have the second tightest relationship with. Remember, this is all relational selling and how you're connected to these folks. So you can add up to four family members and it's gonna be uh, family member one, first name, family member one, last name, family member one, full name, family member uh, one, email, family member one, phone, right? So let's go ahead and see if our database had that. Let's see, we got uh, do to do first name, and then we're going to cruise along and see if we had a spouse or significant other. Here we go. We've got a husband on for one and a wife on another. So we got Harry and Betty. Uh, we don't have a, um, let's see now, we've got their full names and we've got their relation status or type. Let's see what we need here. So we got a first name, last name, and a full name. I got a full name. So I'm going to copy this one. And I'm gonna give you a big hint. I know that when you have a full name versus a first name and a last name broken out, it will give you the option to pull one or the other, but not both. So since I've got the full name, I don't need to worry about breaking this name into parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the full name and I'm done. All right, and then it doesn't say, hey, what's the descriptor of this person? Like, is it a husband and wife, son, daughter, you know, what it is. Uh, but it does say, hey, do you have an email or a phone? Or it, this is pretty good birth date if you happen to have it, if you know the people well, and you've got both birth dates. This is a great time to enter this birth date for the family member. So we don't have a column here with it, but if I had this birth date, or any of this contact information, I would just add it in as a new column. And I would type in their birth date. So let's say I know it's, um, oh, I don't know, September uh, 24th 
19, I hope it, I hope this lines up with what it was the other part there. But anyway, 1982, let's say that was their birthday. Uh, cool. And I got one, but I don't have the other. That's fine. And let's say I even have a, a phone of a family member. All right. So we'll go ahead and create a column for that since it's not in my original uh, database that I pulled out of. But I've got this one for phone. And let's say for Betty, we have a phone. And it's 555-555-4546. Uh, all right. And then uh, let's say we also um, have an email for one of these folks. And for the contact information, we would just do a column add here to the right. There we go. And this new column header, I'd make it the email one. And let's say for the email, we've got not real nine at fake email.com <laughs> right all right so i'm doing that so i don't accidentally send anything out to someone i don't know um, but you would obviously put in the real one all right so now i've got that into the database and let me go to double check yeah we've gotten to where it says don't use anything below this line so we're good uh that's it we add look how fast we added all that information in for the column headers now Again, I want to point out, I'm not going to rearrange all these column headers. It's not necessary. I don't have to move them all together and take the blank ones out or anything. People waste a lot of time on that. You just need it to line up the correct column header over the item. Okay. And now Lofty will do the rest when it pulls it in. And we are ready to go. See you in the next section.